Hi guys, welcome to the Awakened Energy. I'm Skeet. First of all, let's just connect to this Kundalini activation energy. Today, we're going to be going lightly in with the Shiva energy. This means it's the energy coming down through the spine, not the Shakti going up. The Shashumna, through the Kundalini. The Shiva energy can only be activated once you've activated the Shakti energy. And once we've activated them, we can then use them more or less independently. The reason why, logically, the Shiva energy cannot be activated until the Shakti is activated is because, well, if we look at the, the story, the mythology of Shiva, Shiva is the destroyer of worlds to then create new life. Thus, if we interpret that, it means if we were able to directly align with the Shiva energy, it would be destroying our ego when it hasn't had any preparation to be dissolved and will start breaking down our programming and this would lead for obvious reasons to possible dark nights of the soul um, kundalini syndromes and that's why today we're only going very, very lightly with this energy, with this male energy, with this, if you wish, dark energy versus light energy. The black rather than the white of the yin and the yang. So just connect and feel. I've done out of other videos so you can see how they're different. Some people find this energy too strong, naturally. Other people find they connect far better to it. Again, naturally, depending on personality, levels of programming, levels of feeling and awareness of the energies. And of course, this energy brings up the idea because it has to be discussed. Because when we're talking about energies and consciousness, we have to look at magic, really. Call it magic, call it manifestation, whichever way you want to word it. But if you look at magic, you've got light magic and dark magic. And yes, light magic is that of creation and dark magic is that of destruction and recreation. Most people don't realize that dark magic isn't of recreation. And so if you look at it in terms of spiritual forms, you've got, let's call it the angels and the demons. And so they say angels are good and demons are bad. They're all daemons. Yet, the angels build you up, bit by bit. However, the wrath of an angel is just as powerful as what a demon would do, destroying. Therefore, they're just opposites. So you could almost say the wrath of a demon is building you up so fast because obviously we're talking opposites because first they break down and then they build up angels first they will build up and then they will break down it gets a bit complicated and you know there's the good and bad and there's the scary evil fear factor 
that's been produced by certain religions of what one is and the other one isn't. And yes, of course, when there's ego involved and black magic or Shiva energy, so many problems can occur because it shouldn't be used until you fully awaken the light energy within you. And I said this is why we're going very gently today with this Shiva energy, just a taster, especially for those who have risen their Shakti. And as always, I have a disclaimer in the description. Don't do this unless you're willing to take responsibility for it. But with that said, we must understand. We used to think fires in forests were destructive. However, we now know the destruction of a forest with fire breeds new life. There are even seeds of certain plants that cannot germinate until they've been exposed to very high temperatures, i.e. a fire. And this is the fact of Shiva. The destruction paves way for new growth. Of course, if we think about it, Shakti must come first. Therefore, a forest, the trees must grow to maturity and they must sprout seeds and lay seeds. So when that fire comes along, these things can happen. And when this happens, if we look at forests, there are certain trees that are very resilient to fires. And so whilst everything gets cleared out, there are certain trees that will always survive a fire, no matter how hot it gets. Just as when we raise Shakti first, we're building certain pillars of energy within us. So when we get to the point of Shiva, these strong structures will not be destroyed. So then the fire is a clearing and can only produce new growth. So we could say this is a metaphor or we could say this is literal. Shiva energy clears away all the cobwebs and all the weeds, but it will take away other things too, to allow for new growth. I don't talk about the Shiva energy much, because of course it is, as obviously stated now, a more advanced energy work. And those that use it must also know that to project Shiva, unfortunately, can be quite dangerous. And hence it should only be used in energy work, as I said, on people who have already had their Shakti well established, their egos are in check. Because just like in black magic, it can be used for control. Don't get me wrong, so can Shakti. Shakti can manipulate. You think people who haven't risen energies 
They can still manipulate through words, through opinions, through false beliefs, through false accusations. Unfortunately, this happens more and more and more. Because of ego. We must also remember, because we are talking about two dualistic concepts, Shakti and Shiva, Yin and Yang, White and Dark, that these are not actually dualistic. They fall under the law of polarity. And hence, there is a scale from black to white. There are 10,000 shades of grey. So now what I said about the ego, hypnotic speech patterns, people falsely accusing people, They could claim to be the holiest of holy, the brightest of bright, complete pacifists. Yet it's actually not true. Within them, they have very dark, powerful energies that take them over. To try and get ahead in negative ways. To try and take people, good people down using negative things, negative forms. And thus the law of karma is there to respond, or the law of cause and effect, to respond to these people. It's there for a reason. Until one and rise above it and disconnect from it. When you're able to rise above it and disconnect from it, you'll know. Raise this energy a little bit more. Just a touch. I'm not going heavy here. Namaste.